Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. Alright, it's Saturday, so it's another restaurant day. Um, I'm going to actually violate one of my rules today. In the past, when I've been doing these restaurant vlogs, I've been trying to hit like little one-off or two-off restaurants that are just something unique to this town. Unfortunately, in a, in a city like Waco, where there's only 136,000 people, there aren't really a, that many one-off restaurants to check out. So today we're going to try a chain that I've never heard of. Today we're going to visit a place called Cheddar's Scratch Kitchen. They've been around since 1979 and they've got a couple hundred or so locations across the United States. Although it doesn't seem like they've moved any further west than about Colorado. But it looks like there's a few of them uh, basically in most of the other states of the U.S. So if you get a chance, you know, I don't know, we'll see if this is any good. I looked at their menu, they seem to have a, a wide variety of stuff, from burgers to steaks to pasta to fish to, you know, just basically a lot of different stuff. And it looks really good, so I think we're going to go try Cheddar's Scratch Kitchen. Come along, won't you? All right, here we are at Cheddar's Scratch Kitchen, and once again, the old adage applies. If the parking lot is full, there's probably a lot of happy people here. Let's go in, check them out. It's actually a nice looking place, uh, well decorated outside, so let's see what it's like inside. All right, so I got my Sprite, and they brought me that. That looks really good, whatever it is. I guess that's their equivalent of chips and salsa like you get at a Mexican place. I've looked at the menu right now. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a blackened salmon and shrimp. That looks really good. Um, comes with two sides, and I guess I'm going to get some get a baked potato and some steamed broccoli. That looks good too. So we'll see what happens. So I tried this. It's really good. Basically, what it is, it's a croissant with a sort of a uh, sugary, uh, cinnamon kind of. Uh, topping on it's very good so this place is a little bit more formal than I usually visit uh, you know no hubcaps on the wall no uh, rusted gas station signs or coca-cola signs but check out that ceiling fan isn't that awesome so I've been watching some of the other meals they've been bringing out for other guests uh, looks like really good stuff so I'm looking forward to this all right my food has arrived and boy does it look good wish you could smell this it smells good too even the uh, waitress threatened to steal some from me if I didn't uh, defend my food, so. Yep, let's give this a dig in. All right, first impressions. I haven't tried the potato yet, but the salmon is really tender and flavorful. The, I really like the shrimp. The shrimp has got a, a nice little bite to it. There's a nice garlic flavor to it. And uh, even the broccoli is pretty good. It's got just slightly salty flavor. You know, it's basically it's steamed broccoli. So it's pretty simple, but you know what, it's hard, it's uh, easy to screw it up too. You can overcook broccoli very easily. Now as one of those people who eats his baked potatoes, skin and all, I really appreciate it when they put uh, garlic salt on the outside of the skin. That just really adds to the uh, experience. Now I may not have mentioned this before, but I'm a huge fan of uh, fish, and especially salmon, so I appreciate great salmon. Can't go wrong with that. All right, I was a good boy again and finished up my plate. Uh, all of it was really good. I can't complain about any of it. The salmon was really good. It had kind of a mango salsa on it, which gave it a really nice uh, uh, sweet flavor to it. The salmon itself was juicy. The shrimp was really tasty. It had good garlic flavor, nice little bite to it. Uh, the, uh, the broccoli was good and even the baked potato was good, skin and all. So yeah, I can't complain about this place at all. Um, I'm going to finish up my uh, Sprite and then I think I'm out of here. Check out this kind of cool fish tank they have here right in the middle of the, of the restaurant. It kind of separates the uh, restaurant area from the bar. Then of course they got a nice little bar section over here. Which, like I said, is uh, separated from the main restaurant. Very nice place. I really, really enjoyed it here. So when I was driving home from the restaurant, I went by the. I just happened to drive by the uh, 
Little Express Hospital place I visited a few weeks ago where I had my uh, earwax treatment thing done. And I happened to see this thing out in front. They're apparently having some sort of a fair today, so you don't see very see things like this very often. So I decided I wanted to just stop by and see what it was. McClellan County Sheriff's Department, their SWAT vehicle. Don't get a chance to walk around inside these things very often. even pop out the top here if you need to. So yeah, you don't get a chance to see these things very often. And keep your head low down too. You'll, you'll bump your head if you're tall like me. So that's way cool. Let's see what else they got here. So yeah, they got the uh, bounce house for the kids. An ambulance vehicle with a <laughs> wet drive vac box in the driver's compartment. Oh, even got ponies here for the kids. Check that out. That's kind of cool. Don't know what the event's about, but whatever. It seems to be fun for the kids. So I guess uh, the emergency f uh, room here, they have uh, like a fall festival. Uh, that's what this is. It was, just went from 11 to 1 today. So I got right here at the end of it. Uh, but apparently they do that like four times a year. So I don't know. I'll have to keep my eyes open for that in the future. Well, that was a really good meal, I gotta admit. It was a little bit more pricey than I expected, but you gotta remember, this is a little bit uh, more of a high-end restaurant, too. A lot of times I've been going to places that are, you know, a little bit more than diners. So, you know, when you get uh, more of a high-end restaurant with, you know, more of the high-end food, you know, this isn't a, just a burger and fries kind of place. Although you can get that here. You know, that was uh, really pretty high-quality seafood, uh, baked potato, really great food. So... Uh, you know, in the end, I got in and out of there for a little under $25. So it still wasn't exorbitantly expensive, but, you know, it was it was a little bit more than usual. And that's kind of what I like to do is throw in the price, too, is so you can judge not only the quality of the food, but the cost of uh, the meal, so you can judge that for yourself. Like I said, there are a few hundred of these places around the United States. They haven't gotten much past Colorado in terms of moving west. But they're really, uh, they really seem to be uh, popular in, in kind of the Midwest and on the East Coast. So if you get a chance, you know, check it out. It was a really good meal. I'm not, I don't regret that one at all. Uh, highly recommend it. Now, a few days ago, you call, I did a, uh, a video on some of the dreams I have, I've been having. Now, it's been five days since I had one. Uh, but I had another interesting dream last night. I'm not sure if it's actually related to any of the rest of them because there were a lot of similarities with those dreams and not really that many similarities this time. About the only thing that was the same was that this one, like the past dreams, were all set in my bed and I dreamt about something being in a certain position in the bed and then woke up almost immediately and I was in that same exact position but without any of the other things having happened. Uh, you know, a lot of the commonalities with the other dreams were they were all very short duration. It all started off with something weird happening with the covers. Uh, there was nothing involving the covers this time. And this was a dream that had actually been going on for a while. Um, I had dreamt that I was uh, having some friends that were visiting and uh, they were spending the night and uh, as I was, uh, in fact, it, it was interesting. I didn't really specifically know any of the people personally, but I'm convinced that one of them was Rick Harrison from the Pawn Stars show. That's the, uh, the, uh, the man who basically runs the place, the bald guy. Uh, now, that may just be because I've been watching, uh, kind of binge watching some Pawn Stars episodes. Maybe that how that, how that got in my head. 
But, you know, there were a couple of uh, people that were like sleeping in my bedroom and uh, somewhere during the night, uh, a young lady came into my bedroom and crawled into bed with me. Now, you know, it was kind of cold that night. And um, so I remember asking her, you know, you want to get under the covers, you know, so it's warm. And at that point I woke up. Uh, now I do remember looking at the woman. I don't remember, I don't think I know her, but it seemed to me that she was one of the uh, characters I had seen, one of the animatronic characters I had seen in that Halloween store I visited a couple weeks ago. You remember there was those two twins, uh, the little girls that were twins and they were, you know, all white skin and white hair and white clothing. Yeah, it seemed like it was one of them, but it was only one of them and it wasn't like children. It was like, you know, an adult sized version of that. And like I said, there was nothing intimidating, nothing frightening about it. It seemed like a really benign uh, kind of, you know, not not the same intimidating kind of dreams that the other ones were, where, where, you know, the covers were flying over my face and things were pressing down on my chest and crawling onto my bed and trying to turn me over and doing weird things like that. It was just a real passive dream. So I don't even know if this one's connected to the rest, but I kind of wanted to document it here just so, you know, we can, you know, keep track of it because, you know, this is going to kind of be my my record of how this happened. So if, if at some point, you know, I do want to go back and look at these, you know, I can I can uh, figure out, you know, when the when it happened and get all the specifics. Well, I, I do remember when I woke myself up, it was uh, 5.22 this morning. So like I, like I said, it's, the time frame is about the same. They've been happening, you know, five, six, seven in the morning. So I don't know. I, like I said, I don't know if this is connected to any of the rest of them or just you know, another dream that's uh, just kind of unexplainable. But anyway, there you go. Now you now you know. Um, I would like to thank my latest Patreon, Yvonne Wilson. Thank you so much, Yvonne, for becoming uh, my latest Patreon and for supporting my channel. And to the rest of you, thank you as always for watching, and I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night. Oh, and one more thing. Yeah, today was episode 200. Last hundred went really fast, didn't they? Yay!